What's up guys, Danny here from Bloomcorp and I'm going to give you a review of the Griffin Beacon. Now to give you the best example of this, I'm going to give you the Griffin Beacon and my phone. And basically using my phone, I'm going to show you how to pair the app, how I'm going to work the app and I'm going to give you an example on the TV of how the app actually works itself. So without further ado, we're going to go straight into that. First, you need to get your phone, put the Griffin Beacon down there, you need to get your phone, you need to go into General. When on general, <coughs> I'll turn down the brightness here so you can see my screen. When in general, you need to go down to the general setting there, and you need to go into Bluetooth. You want to turn your Bluetooth setting on. Now on the Griffin Beacon, when you put the batteries in, you'll see a blue flashing light. It should be there. If I click this down, the blue flashing light flashes. This basically means it's going to pair in mode. Now when it's in pair in mode, if I click the connected button there, it will connect the device to the Griffin Beacon. As you can see there, it does say now say connected. So if I want to go play this by my TV quickly, now it's connected and it's by my TV, what I'll do is I'll go into the application. I'll put the link down below for the application. It's just called Digit. So you want to click on the application and it launches it. Now the app flow there is actually really, really good. I've got free preset here. You've got TV, Media Player, and Microsoft DVR. The DVR Microsoft is actually the Xbox. The Apple Media Player is Mark from Apple TV. And the Samsung TV there is that one there. If you were to want to add a new device, you just click the add button there, you want to add device, and then you run through all of the options there, and it runs through like a quick setup quickly, I'll go straight to Samsung and I'll see if I can get one straight for you. So we're on Samsung here, and we want to do for a TV, so you click the TV option, It'll next, now go to the next set of options, and it's a user remote wizard, so you want to do user remote wizard, and now you click on. And if the TV doesn't turn on, you run through all of these steps, so you'll say no. Or actually the TV to turn on there, so you would say yes. Um, what I'll need to do now is I'll just I'll go back to step one. And I'm going to go to my Samsung TV and I'm going to turn the volume down, for example. And as you can see in the background, my volume's turning down. If I wanted to change the channel, I just click channel up and down. It's currently on a different input so I'd have to change the input so if I want it to channel 28 in the UK it's actually e-form preview so as you can see there it's just running through the channels it's now on e I'm going to turn this off quickly just because I can't play it for legal reasons <coughs> so that's basically like a quick review of like the application itself you've got the swipe buttons you've got other functions now I'm now going to get into the details of the device itself the device is really small and nifty and we've got some devices upstairs so I can just pick up the device, take my phone and I've got a remote for all over the flat. I've got Sky and I've got a Panasonic box upstairs so I can just program those into my preset options and I can just like click on and off and all that and basically it works perfectly. I can't mock the device for how small and how amazing it is for portability issues. One major issue I do have with the device is the uh, build quality. It is quite plasticky and I feel like if I dropped it too hard maybe it might break which is a big downer for me, so that's something I need to take into consideration when moving. The other big issue is the fact that obviously I need to use it with my phone. I did know this when I bought it, so it's actually my error here, but obviously it does drain the battery on my phone. It does go through quite a few batteries, but this is like the fourth set of batteries I've used with the device, which is another downer for me. Um, I don't really want to keep having to buy batteries, and I don't really want to have to buy the rechargeable ones just to use the device, so I would say that's a big downer. I'm going to give the device an overall rating of 7 out of 10. I don't really want to go into too much detail. I bought it from HMV for £54.95. I would imagine you can probably get it on Amazon or likelihood of Google Shopping if you just want to have a look around for a bit cheaper. But it's going to be about the £50 sterling rate in England. In America, it's going to be probably slightly cheaper if you take up the conversion rates. If you are in America and you are an English citizen, you may as well buy one from America. I would recommend buying this device just with the ease and the practicality of it. However, you do have to take into consideration how much it might cost in the long run. Keeping this quite short here, this was Daniel again from Bloomcorp, and this was a review of the Griffin Beacon. £54.95 I paid for it. If you liked the video, subscribe above. Anything you wanted to improve, basically, just drop a comment. Like it, because it really does help us on YouTube. And obviously, make sure you come back and check out our next videos. Again, if you go on our website, www.bloomcorp, we do do articles every day on technology-related features. So if you just want to check back there. And this again, Daniel from Bloomcorp. And I just want to say thank you for watching. Peace out.